Thank you for coming. It's a beautiful morning here in Richmond, and as Alexa said, we're joined by our four candidates in Richmond, Teresa Watt, Jazz Joe Hall, Matt Pitcairn, and Alexa Liu. We all know that we're in a very difficult time. British Columbia is deep in an economic crisis. We need to rebuild confidence. We need to rebuild BC. And part of that has been accomplished by federal programs that keep people with enough money to pay for groceries. But we need to get people back to work. We need bold action. So the BC Liberal government will eliminate the provincial sales tax for a full year. In the second year, we'll reduce it to 3%. Because this will give people spring in their step. This will give people a chance to get ahead. This will build British Columbia by bringing in investment and giving people the confidence to get back involved in our economy. A major cut in provincial sales tax to zero in the first year and 3% in the second year gives people a chance to get ahead. It gives people a chance to go out and do the things they want to do, to get out into restaurants, to enjoy life. And that's what we want to do right here in British Columbia. This is a bold decision and it means that we will have the chance to rebuild British Columbia the way we want it. So we're happy to take questions. Great. Thanks, everyone. So uh, first question, we will go to Rob Shaw from the Vancouver Sun. Go ahead, Rob. Hi, uh, Andrew. I guess the first question is uh, that this $7 billion tax that's being eliminated for a year, do you find a way to offset that lost revenue or just add it to the, the deficit? Or what is your plan for that missing money? Everyone knows that we're in a big economic crisis. And this is not a time to worry about the details so much as to get people back to work. And one of the ways to get people back to work is to stimulate the economy by reducing taxes. And that's exactly what we're going to do. As Rob has said, it's a $6.88 billion issue that comes with the uh, reduction of sales tax to 0% in the first year. But we believe that British Columbians will benefit from that by building confidence and getting people involved in the economy like never before. Do you have a follow-up, Rob? Uh, thanks. Uh, so we haven't seen your platform, but I'm assuming that in this year you're, you're running a deficit in a provincial budget uh, or you are planning to somehow, well, I guess maybe that's the question. Are you planning on running a deficit with this $7 billion loss and do you have a plan for a particular year to get the, balance, the budget balanced again or can you outline that for us? Every government in the Western world is anticipating deficit spending for the next few years. That's the fact of the matter to pay for health and education, to maintain the services we want, to build all the projects that are already underway, and we'll be announcing more projects to come. But the idea is that we've got to stimulate this economy, we've got to give people confidence, we've got to rebuild BC, and that means that we're going to get rid of the sales tax for a full year and reduce it to 3% in the second year. Great, thanks. We'll go to the next question. That's Binder Sajjan from CTV. Go ahead, Binder. Uh, hi, um, I'm just wondering, are you uh, looking at other tax breaks, uh, such as cutting some of the ones that the NDP brought in? Well, the NDP, as we know, brought in 23 new or increased taxes. This affected everybody in this province, so your tax bill went up. We're talking about a way to give people a chance to get ahead. This will result in a family of four having an average tax reduction of $1,700. That's money back in their pocket so they can have a chance to get ahead in life rather than pay the taxes that they currently do. We need to stimulate this economy by getting people back involved and to get them back to work. And that's exactly what this will do. Do you have a follow-up, Inder? Yeah, and obviously we haven't seen the the costing here for um, all of this, but I'm just wondering, um, is a Liberal government willing to increase... uh, the deficit, or would a Liberal government be willing to increase the deficit that we're already expecting in BC? We should be under no illusions. There will be deficit spending for a few years to come in every jurisdiction in the Western world. But that doesn't mean that we just back off and let people suffer. What we have to do is stimulate this economy, get people back to work, bring in investment, and rebuild the confidence that we have lost and get people working again. Great. Thanks, Bender. Uh, next question will go to Justin McElroy from CDC. Go ahead, Justin. 
Andrew. I'm wondering if uh, your party has done any economic modeling in terms of what the impact uh, to uh, GDP would be on a reduction of or elimination of the PSD, or if at this point it's more about the message that it would send uh, for voters. Well, the Premier's own Economic Recovery Task Force included the BC Business Council, who recommended a dramatic drop in provincial sales tax by cutting it in half for two years. We're going a step further. We're going to stimulate this economy, bring in investment, and create employment by getting rid of the PST for the first year and reducing it to 3% in the second year. This economy calls for bold action, and the bold action we are putting together today is to reduce provincial sales tax to zero in the first year and then reduce it to 3% in the second year. Do you have a follow-up, Justin? Uh, I, I do, and so just to be clear, are you pledging not to reduce any spending in the budget for any of the ministries in the year that this the uh, tax is completely eliminated, or is that still to be determined? The provincial government has a fundamental duty to deliver services like health and education, and we will not be cutting any of those services because at a time like this, that's exactly when they're needed. So when you hear from the NDP about uh, anything suggesting that we're going to be cutting health and education, they are wrong. They're making it up because we are committed to providing the services British Columbians need in this time of need. Great, thank you. We'll go to the next question. It's Richard Sussman from Global News. Go ahead, Richard. Andrew, I'm just wondering whether some people say a PST cut actually benefits the wealthiest because they're the ones that spend the most. So is this just not a benefit for those who spend the most will save the most? Well, every economist in the Western world will agree with you that provincial sales tax is what's known as a regressive tax. The lower your income, the more of it you have to spend on provincial sales tax. So this is designed to get everybody in the economy livened up and out there enjoying life again because it will benefit people with lower incomes the most, as is well established by every economist you talk to. Do you have a follow-up, Richard? I do. Thank you. Um, I just Last week you spent a lot of time on public safety the issues of homelessness, addressing those issues to help address public safety. And I want to read you a quote from Bruce Bandman, uh, one of your candidates in Abbotsford. Uh, he said, you are, if you are a drug user or a criminal, you're not a helpless victim, you are and choose to be a criminal. It is a legal activity you are doing. If you are a pedophile, you are a criminal. And how we deal with criminals is we lock them up. Do you agree with Mr. Bandman's assertions here? And does he still fit with comments like this on the BC Liberal ticket? Let's be crystal clear. I'm a medical doctor. Addictions are a health issue. They need to be treated like a health issue. Those remarks are wrong. And I expect that Mr. Bandman will accept after the passage of many years that he was wrong. So we need to move forward in British Columbia, deal with issues related to mental health and addictions by treating the causes, and there are many causes, and preventing the harm. And this is the kind of thing that is a central role of the provincial government that will continue under a B.C. Liberal government. And at the same time, we'll be taking the bold action of reducing provincial sales tax to zero in the first year, 3% in the second year, to give people some confidence to rebuild B.C. so that people are more engaged in the economy and feel the confidence to move ahead. Great, thank you. We'll go to the next question. It's Adrian Blanc from CBC Radio Canada. Go ahead. Oh, hello, Mr. Wilkinson. Uh, many people ask for uh, putting the Site C construction on pause. What's your opinion about that? Well, the Site C project was initiated under the BC Liberals and after a lot of fuss was carried on by the uh, BC NDP and the project is approaching completion and it would make perfect sense to complete it. The issue of how it's proceeded is that we delivered the project in the hands of the NDP on time and on budget, and now it is running well over budget and well over time because of NDP mismanagement. Do you have a follow-up, Adrian? Yeah, it seems that uh, many studies show that uh, there are problems with the uh, geography, so it seems to be more of an engineering issue. So would you agree that there needs to be an independent study to see if it's still doable? 
Well, the Site C construction issues are engineering and construction matters that require a lot of expertise to address. And we're pleased to say that when we delivered that project in the hands of the NDP, it was on time and on budget because of good engineering work and very solid construction work. And through their mismanagement, now it seems to be going off the rails. They've got a lot of explaining to do. Great, thank you. And uh, last question of the day, we will go to Keith Baldry from Global News. Go ahead, Keith. Hi, Andrew. Uh, just a, sort of a technical question. In terms of eliminating the sales tax for one year, we're halfway through the current fiscal year. So would this elimination straddle two fiscal years or would it take effect next fiscal year? British Columbians need immediate relief. We're well into the second wave of this pandemic. People are worried. They're concerned about their future. And so what we will do is as soon as possible eliminate the provincial sales tax for one full year and in the second year reduce it to 3%. This is the kind of bold action that British Columbians are looking for, that people are crying out for, so that we can move ahead as a society and not get bogged down in this, the economic doldrums of the combination of a pandemic and NDP mismanagement. Do you have a follow-up, Keith? Yes. So I assume that means um, you're going to straddle two fiscal years. Uh, just a, as a follow-up, just in your response to Richard's question about Bruce Bamman, are you expecting or... Uh, demanding Mr. Bamman to uh, clarify or withdraw those remarks? Well, I certainly expect that there'll be a complete withdrawal of those remarks because they're well out of date and not in step with current thinking. We need to be clear. Mental health issues are a medical problem. They're an issue where people are dealing with diseases. We need kindness, as Dr. Henry has suggested. And addictions are similarly a medical disorder of various causes. And the causes need to be treated so that we can treat those causes, and prevent the harm. Great. Thanks, everyone. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Great to see you. Lovely day in Richmond. Yeah, sure. Do you want to come in closer? Oh. Your call. We can hear you. I can yell. <laughs> So about the George Massey crossing, I'm wondering if the BC Liberals are elected to government, do you plan to scrap the plan that the NDP has been working on for two years, which apparently their business plan is almost completed, or, and go back to the 10-lane bridge plan? Wondering which one you would do if elected. Well, when we drove out here this morning and came back past a two-kilometer long lineup of trucks, it was a clear sign that this must be fixed. This is not acceptable to have the biggest traffic bottleneck in Western Canada sitting here in Richmond. So we will be moving promptly to come up with a new plan for delivering traffic sanity into Richmond on Highway 99. And we'll be announcing uh, interesting things to say about that in the next few days. So scrapping the NDP plan. Well, we'll give you a very solid statement about what's happening with the Massey Tunnel replacement in the next few days, but we are clear this has to be dealt with promptly, not with the kind of delays and wasted time and dawdling of the NDP that has really not come up with any kind of credible plan to deal with this ever. But that would set you back again like you've criticized um, the BC NDP that the... Ten Lane Bridge would have been almost, you know, three quarters built or whatever. So if you were to go back, it would once again set the process back. So that's what I'm trying to figure out whether this is going to be another delay on that on that um, crossing replacement. The people of Richmond have seen these huge sand berms that are put up beside the freeway, both on the north side and the south side. There was construction preparation for a bridge that should have been in place in 2022. Instead, we have no replacement for the tunnel in place because the NDP have completely dropped the ball and are pretending to do something when they have no intention of helping the people of Richmond or Delta or Surrey. We will address this actively and aggressively and we'll get, put out a plan for you in the next few days.